Yo, 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 yo. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. My name is Kirk Barrett, where we have one game and you can count on us for this game as always. We're going to find the best information anywhere out there because we love this profession, to help you create a better practice and a better life. And today I bring in Jenny Poulos, who is an amazing coach of ours, here to help you navigate one of the most difficult conversations you'll ever have as a dentist. How do I talk to my team and get everybody working together so that they can help the practice be more successful from a financial perspective? How do we talk about money? Today, we give you the answers. If you get this right, you're going to see it's going to transform your entire business. So check it out. Hope you guys enjoy it. We'll see you soon. guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. My name is Kirk Barrett, and what's really cool about what we get to do is we get to go inside of great dental practices, figure out what's going wrong, and see how we can provide great solutions for you. And today, I've got one of our amazing coaches on, Jenny Poulos, and we're going to be talking about the team's role, your team's role, in helping you become successfully, financially in your dental practice. And this can often be a challenging issue for a lot of dentists. So uh, Jenny, thanks so much for being on. I really appreciate you. Yeah, Kirk, happy to be here. I'm excited to chat about this today. I know this can be a subject that is touchy and tough for business owners. Um, I've sat in that seat wondering, you know, how is my team going to help me um, in supporting the financial success of the business? And we're rolling out some amazing new tools, and this is really going to help support that tool for you. So I can't wait to have this conversation. Yeah, it's awesome. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. The Money Roadmap, which is going to be a step-by-step -step tool to help you really understand your overhead. And this whole entire series, as you're listening to the podcast, is just to help you create a better practice and a better life. And maybe we could talk a little bit about the historical nature and why this is so important. You know, because some dentists, Jenny, they don't want to talk about money. Like, that's not why they went into this in the whole first place. So let's talk about the why and why this is so important. You know, there's a number of things behind this, but, but I would say, bottom line, you do run a business mm -hmm. and your business needs to be healthy and it needs to be smart. It's such a foundational concept um, that, that once you grasp it, it's like, oh my gosh, yes, that's so, really, that's so true. And we're, we're good at talking about the procedures. We're good at talking about the things that, that we do in people's mouths and the systems. And sometimes we get stuck when we have to talk about those other smart pieces, those, those things that are around money, because we think, gosh, they won't care or they won't understand or they won't be bought in. And I'll tell you, the team is telling themselves their own story about, about the finances of the practice. So let's help fill in that story with some true pieces, help them understand some key concepts around money and around finances that are going to help support the business. And one of those is really, hey, we support a lot of families. We yeah. feed a lot of mouths. Yeah. Now, I love this exercise because this is an important one. You can do this as a dentist with your team is helping your team understand that there's a lot of people that depend on this practice. Can you describe that? Because we do this with a lot of the practices we coach. How does this exercise work and how would I use this as a dentist? Uh, people just don't think holistically about how many people are actually supported by your practice. We, we look at who comes into the, who comes into the practice every day, you know, the five, six, seven, 10, 20, 30 people. And we think, okay, I'm offering some level of support to just those people. But then we look at who's behind those people. There's dads and there's moms and there's kids. There's whole families 
that are reliant upon what's happening in that practice every day. And when we just open our eyes a little bit and think about who are all the people that are connected to this practice, we realize, hey, we get to actually do a lot more for a lot more people than we realized. And the team members see that too. Yeah. They begin to feel like, oh my gosh, I'm not just supporting me and my family, but I'm also helping to support the hygienist and her kids and their family and their dreams and their goals. When we open our lives and our eyes to everyone that's touched by the practice and in a really transparent way, um, it gives us a, a new level of buy-in. Yeah, absolutely. So like, let's just say you're a dentist listening, you have 12 team members. A great way to do this is just say how many family members from each one of the 12 depends on the livelihood of the practice. And so we've done this so many times, you can see a team of 12 say, gosh, there's like 98 people or 87 people that depend on this practice you know, from a team standpoint. So the next question becomes, is it important for this practice to be profitable to continuously support these families? And the answer is yes. And so, well, money is never the goal um, for a lot of the dentists that we get to meet getting into dentistry. The byproduct, and again, I'll go back to one of my earliest mentors, which is Pete Dawson saying, you know, making money in dentistry is quite easy. It's the byproduct of doing the right thing with the right people. And we found that to be absolutely true. So I think what we're really saying is, number one, helping you understand the why. Like, it's okay to be profitable. Your profit is to your practice what oxygen is to your body. Without it, both die. And so we've got to have a reasonable amount of profit. Profit lends itself to margin, emotional margin, you know, time margin, uh, profitability. So you can make decisions financially. Uh, it can help you slow down and enjoy people. It can help you commit to more quality. So it's okay to be profitable. Now, Jenny, as we translate this into how we communicate with our teams, give us your thoughts on that. Uh, we need to educate our teams on where our goals come from, mm -hmm. why we have certain agreements, policies, and systems around collections, why we don't want to be a bank to our patients, why we can't just say, yes, I would, I would love for everyone in this office to make $100 an hour. I, I, every dentist I know would love to pay their team members $100 an hour. Kirk, you'd love to pay us all hundreds and hundreds of dollars an hour. Unlimited, write the check. Unlimited, right? But we need, we need to have conversations about understanding like, hey, yes, we set these goals. We have these markers. We track these key practice indicators like production, like collections, like production per hour so that we can give raises, so that we can buy that new CEREC machine that is gonna allow us to increase production, that's gonna allow us to go to the Brewers game with our whole team next week, right? right. We set goals based on, based on markers that are important in the practice, and we want our team members to understand that. One of the first things that starts with is like, hey, collection goals come from BAM, yeah. right? Talk a little bit about that, Kirk. Yeah, so this has been around in dentistry forever. It's the BAM, bare ass minimum, which was what was the uh, what was the, the the clear amount that we needed in order to keep the doors open. A lot of times, that was the original definition of it. And then, you know, some people, which I agree with, said, listen, we've got to build salary for principals and owners in there. And that became the BAM too. However you define it, there's a number in which we need to achieve as a team and be there. Now, that's one piece of it. There's been the age old adage where you um, figure out what the team compensation is number is or percentage and then you extrapolate that into a goal we've seen that work before in certain instances where you have team members bought in on being more systems dependent and allowable 
uh, bonuses to be able to happen. So there's different ways you can do this, but you do have to have targets. I would say this before you have targets. Before you have to have targets financially, you've got to have data. This becomes the foundational piece where most people go wrong. Because Jenny, like, like you said earlier, not given appropriate information, we make up our own story. Like I could be a team member. I feel like I'm working super hard here, but we don't really talk about any data. So I'm going to make up my story about the boat that the doctor just bought, you know, and they're going on a lot of vacations and all those things. And so now the story runs rampant. I think the best thing that you can do to get your team to help you, number one, is have great core values around being healthy and smart and in Act Dental, you know, one of our core values here is results driven. Like I love relationships. I love being with people. But at the end of the day, we got to get results. That's what we're called to do. In addition to the other core values that mean so much to us. But having a good set of data around collection numbers, collection percentages, write-off amounts, accounts receivables. I've already mentioned so many of them. Can, that can add to the financial health of the practice. For instance, if your collection numbers are 85%, there's a mountain of opportunity that exists there. Or if your write-offs are 33%, there's three mountains there that add to collect. Now, we don't even want to go down the PPO road, road, but because we created the PPO roadmap, like one of the things that's important is like how many of your patients pay your full fee? You might say, well, 25% of our patients pay. There's 10 mountains right there that add to overall profitability. What we have to do is get coalesced around a certain number of KPIs and data and track them. Some of them can be leading indicators, which I'm going to encourage you to do. Some of them can be lagging indicators like collections and production, which are good to look at periodically, but they don't often lend themselves to in the moment, really good decision making. So I would, you know, Jenny, take us down this path, but like part of the financial health of the practice, and this is why we do an assessment. So I'll take you into the coaching process a little bit. One of the things about any change process is the first step in any change process is to tell the truth. You look at Alcoholics Anonymous. You look at a weight loss program. You look at anything. First of all, the first step is we got to tell the truth and we got to figure out where everything is at. We do a practice assessment. And one of the things that Dina and Gina do on our team is they figure out exactly where a practice is financially. And in, in that there's like red data points all over of opportunities. You know, we used to call them low hanging fruit. I don't think that's really the best thing to say anymore, but it's true. There are quick wins and opportunities that can be capitalized immediately. Then cascading that to the team in appropriate data sets where they can say, Oh my gosh, I can help with this every single week. Would you agree? Yep. Our numbers having understanding around our numbers, good data, gives us a snapshot of the opportunities for growth. And when it comes to our teams and their role, it also gives us an opportunity to educate them around what the number is, where the number comes from, why it's important, and actions that we need to take to get that number healthy. When we think just about collections, you said, you know, team members might, you know, say like, we, you know, we're collecting 85%. Like, that's awesome. They just see this big number, but they they may not understand like, hey, okay, so we're collecting. Yes, we're collecting 85%. And it's taking us how many days to collect that? Or it takes us how many days to collect that, that other percentage? Uh, as a business owner, you may, you're responsible for educating your team around these items. Well, one of the things that was really important that we that we can learn about is the decreasing value of the dollar. Yeah, talk we, about that. That's a really important yeah, concept. Right? Like, hey, you know, we collect 85% and it's fine and I'll, I'll send out a few statements and I'll make a few phone calls and we'll get the rest of it eventually. Team members don't really think about, hey, when I miss that collection on the date of service, what are all of the expenses that are going into actually now collecting that money once the patient has walked out the door. You know, what is 
what does it cost for me to send a statement? There's the actual cost of the paper. There's the cost of maybe the third party company that's sending those statements. There's the stamps. What is your time team member worth when you have to make four, five, six, seven follow up calls, follow up texts, follow up emails to get that money? And then we begin to have this like light bulb moment where we understand, hey, that $10 that I would have collected that was worth $10 on day one, when I collect it 30 days later, is worth $6, $5, because I've had to put in all of this effort, all of this work. I've had to put out money to now get that money back in. People just don't really think about that. And a simple conversation around that concept can shoot up your date of service collections, can shoot up your profitability because then we think, hey, I got to make sure to collect that money because I know what it's going to cost to collect it down the road. I love it. And what you're talking about really is getting your team members to weigh in so that they can buy in and the value of a dollar is a great conversation. Another thing to consider along this path, and I probably have 30 of these for you guys as you're listening, is number one, we talk about data. Nothing better for you to do as a business owner from a money standpoint than to know where your costs are. Like you talk about team members telling themselves stories. You're telling yourself a really bad story when you don't know where the cash that's coming in is going out. You're just angry and frustrated constantly because you don't have enough money at the end of the month. You feel like everyone's entitled. You feel like dentistry is way too expensive. PPOs are killing. Do you see where this is going? Like you just become incredibly, what helps you sleep better is when you have incredible accuracy around your financials. You know where the cash came in. You had channels created. You know where your overhead is at for the most part. And now you can have an educated, calm, relaxing conversation when team members sit you down and say, I think I would like to talk about entertaining a raise. You know, you can speak confidently about that. So I think before you start educating your team, one of the steps I put in there is educate yourself Mm -hmm. so that you're teaching them real education. And um, I, I'll say this because I have a lot of thoughts on this, Jenny. Like you and I were doing a, pre, a pre-meeting on this and like this is a heated important thing. And so I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i break it down in a couple of steps. Number one, you gotta have great data and you gotta know your overhead. You gotta know where your cash is coming in. It's gotta come, going out. Number two, in that, we are not saying show your team all of your costs and your overhead and your side. I'm not saying that at all. I think they should be informed on things they can help with, period. Yeah. They, if there's something specifically they can help with. Let me give you an example. If you know that your practice collects $2 million a year and you've set a supply budget of 5%, you now know the target for what you invest in supplies. And you can enlist a team member to help you hit that target. That is clear it's simple and it's easy. Are they gonna hit it every time? No, but me as a team member, if I know the budget, I can, and I know your vision, I can get you pretty close and then maybe you just sit down and reward the team member with a little gift card or something to say, thank you, we hit it. That's one particular case. But the other things that come from that, so one, you know your numbers, two, you Um, Don't share every single detail, only the ones that they can help with. And number three, like we said at the beginning, is identifying the opportunities that exist. And so one of them might be AR. One of them might be, um, you know, uh, the collections percentage. One of them might be, um, you know, adjusting your fees. And so that's how you can take a look at this. And we suggest that you do it quarter over quarter. There's opportunities that exist. You don't have to chase 30 things. If you can pick three or four that help the practice, think about that. With a team of 12 or 13, if we're focused on three or four things, we're going to make a dramatic impact to this practice. Anything you would add on that, Jenny? I think um, budgets are an often overlooked one that can be really important. And um, when we talk about top line growth of a practice affecting the top line and the bottom line, we, we focus a lot on the top line and don't always think about the bottom line. We don't think about the expenditures, what's going out, setting solid budgets 
that let's be honest, our team is going to have to help us execute those budgets, just like you said. So if we have a good grasp of our numbers, we set budgets based on what we know to be true, what we're projecting in the future, right? And we establish budgets based on what's actually happening and what we're planning to do. And we clearly communicate those to our team. We can adhere to those budgets. If we give them no guidelines, like they're just going to do what they think is right. Yeah. Um, you know, we, and, and sometimes this comes down to actually like having little conversations about the expense of a specific item. Um, Kirk, you and I were talking about a story, you know, I work in a perio office, um, team members are setting up trays. We, and we were having someone setting up trays with bone. Right. And we do these big ridge aug augmentations that that require a lot of grafting materials and single socket preservations that require just a little. And they just weren't informed or thinking about, hey, what are the cost of the expenses? So they were just dumping out bone onto the tray to set up for these two procedures that required very different item, a very different amount of this item. A little bit of education around, hey, this is the expense of that item. This is the need. And this is what we can actually get out of that vial and the profit that we can gain by being smart around using this really expensive material right. in a way that that is smart for the business. Just that small conversation was like, oh, okay, I didn't know. Yeah. And this is the thing, a lot of times they just don't know what they don't know. Right. So we are responsible for educating our team about the, the metrics that matter, the financial pieces that matter, the expenses that matter, the things that they can have impact on and that are going to thus increase the success, the financial success of the practice. Totally. And I love that example, Jenny. And you're, if you're a dentist listening, you know there's a, there's a ton of these. Now, again, don't pick all of them. It's great to pick a few per quarter and say, listen, this is where we're at. Again, we're going to gather the data. And number two, set reasonable goals or set some education around them. And it's really cool. I've learned this firsthand. When your team members can weigh in, they understand what we're trying to accomplish. They can buy in and they can make decisions. And you're like, thank you so much for doing that. It's often a great one to just talk about the hygiene conversation. Now, this is a sticky issue and everyone's got opinions on this, but hiring a hygienist has never been been more difficult in dentistry. If you go to any public forum, some dentist is saying, well, everybody's going down the street for $1 more. I don't think the good ones are doing that. I think the good ones are looking for a great place where their core values uh, line up with where the practice is at and they want a, a great opportunity, but they also want to come and contribute in a way that they can improve their salary or their livelihood. That's why you became a hygienist in a lot of respects and did the schooling or you became an associate. This, this could apply to any producer in the practice, associate, doctor, or hygienist, is that a really good one is going to ask for a raise at some point. They just will but they have to be given a clear line of sight so that they can easily ask for a raise. And what that means is that it is okay for a hygienist to track their production. That's not the end all of their value, but it's a really healthy conversation when a hygienist can say, hey, listen, I produce more than three times my compensation. I just want to have a conversation. And I'll tell you, as a person receiving that conversation, you're like, game on, because they're very aware of their role and their value in the practice. Same thing with an associate. I think one of the greatest gifts you could give any associate when you talk about how can your team help financially is that I am going to help you, young associate, or you know, we're going to work together. And there's a certain point where the profits of this practice will subsidize your salary, but then there's a certain point where those paths have to diverge. And as an associate, you'll have to live by the same rules that you'll live by if you own your own practice someday is you're going to only be able to take from the profits of the practice, which means your contribution needs to be helping. So setting up reasonable goals in that. Hey guys, I'm just going to say this. Like, it's really hard for me if I'm an associate or a hygienist and I don't know what the targets are and we never talk about them and we just talk about how you feel and how I feel. That's a potentially dangerous conversation. Oh, feelings are not helpful. 
Make this a collaborative guided conversation. I I get this question all the time, right? As as a coach and and dealing with practices all over, it's always the like, "Oh my gosh, how am I going to manage this conversation around raises? How am I how am I going to have this conversation? I'm so nervous." Like you said, I'm just like, "Game on. Here we go. It's not a hard conversation." And we touched on this earlier, but it's like Sally comes in and Sally wants raise. Sally I would love to pay you what you asked for. I would love to pay you $100 an hour. And we need to achieve some goals. We need to we need to move some markers in order to get there. These are my thoughts on what we need to do to increase your production per hour, to increase the collections to whomever we're talking to, the the piece of data that's applicable to them. These are my thoughts. What are your thoughts? Yeah. What are actions that you can take that you can think about to help us get there and then let's chat in 30 days and see where we are let's chat in another 30 days and see where we are give them a road give them clear guidelines around yep i want to be there this is where we need to be and you can have accountability and ownership of getting there yeah. the rate is is in your hands in a lot of ways and I want to give it to you. And together, let's make it happen by doing X, Y, and Z. Bam. Drop the mic. You said it so well. And you're using one of my favorite words again. We hear this all the time in dentistry. I want people to be accountable. I want accountable conversations. Well, let me just say this. Accountability is not a trust thing. It's an accounting issue. You know, so I love trusting people, but accountability requires some type of accounting. What a great opportunity. Any dentist listening to this can take a look at the overall financial health. Talk about smart and healthy practice. You can look at that and you can see opportunities right away. If you can't get a coach, call us. In, in less than 15 minutes, I'll show you 10 opportunities where you can improve the overall financial health of your practice. Now, your next step is to say, how do we gather the data? And then how do I cascade this to my team in a way that it's helpful so that they can help me? And then number three, you know, figure out what we do on a quarterly basis to improve the overall health of the practice, create more margin. And with that, you can give raises, you can do fun stuff, you can go to meetings together, and and it makes life better. One more thing I just want to add is this. It's okay to talk about money. It's okay to talk about numbers. When you talk about numbers, it reduces subjectivity. It's mm -hmm. just it's just a number. The number tells the whole story for the most part. The other thing it does is it organizes our teamwork. If you tell me we're three runs down and it's the seventh inning, we know what to do collectively as a team in order to get there. The other thing is numbers allow us to diagnose what's going wrong. You know, diagnosis becomes incredibly, could you imagine doing dentistry without knowing perio numbers or anything like that or having radiographs just going, no, I'm going to take a peek here and I think I know where to start. No way. Are you crazy? You got to start with numbers. And then lastly, Numbers create competition and co competition is healthy. This is one of the biggest learning points in my career is I was so worried about putting numbers up there among our coaches, you know, because they would feel resentment and it worked the opposite way that I thought. Once we started just putting numbers up there and just saying, hey, look, here's the number. It was wild how healthy and competitive that became. They, they kept saying, well, hey, I think I could... So the same thing applies in your practice. When you put it up there, you're going to be surprised by how healthy the competition becomes. And I would also question you as a leader, when you put numbers up there that truly state the health of the practice and people are like, I don't know if I want to, is that really somebody you want to keep talking to about this important component in your practice? So yeah. I'm not telling you got to let them go. That's not what I'm saying. But maybe there's somebody better suited that would be heavily invested in making sure that this number is healthy. So, And I, I want to say like a small thing about the competition. One of the coolest things that I see around that is it's, it's not just competition. It's also collaboration. Yes. Maybe you have one, you know, we're tracking our fluoride and we have one hygienist that's killing it. 
and everyone's like, oh my gosh, I want to be where you are with my numbers. What are you doing? And then you get to calibrate around verbal skills and you get to calibrate around the educational tools that this hygienist is using in a really amazing way that's letting her hit these marks. And if you don't have transparency here and people can't see that, that conversation will never happen. Mm -hmm. It opens the door to us having all of these conversations that we would never have otherwise. That creates clarity, it creates alignment, and it does create trust. Yeah. It creates trust on your team. Yeah, absolutely. So take the first step and be transparent, create that, you know, competition and collaboration. And you've, hear, you've heard all these examples. Heck, you've heard me talk about being, you know, a three-time employee of the month at Applebee's. But, like, I knew my check average. I knew my end-of-the-day closeout. Nordstrom employees know sales per hour. If you've been a coffee barista, you know exactly what your customer ticket average is. I mean, those are really important metrics and you can learn best practices from each other. Overall, when everybody weighs in and buys in and they're aware of what they can help with, and first of all, let me go to the first one. You know what's going on, doctor. <laughs> Now it lends itself to a very, very healthy situation. And one more thing is when you put that all together, you make really good decisions. You're not making bad decisions based on how you feel or what you heard in the most recent podcast. You aren't adding seven ops because everybody else in your Facebook group is doing it. You're sitting on a mountain of like knowledge and understanding that you can say, no, I'm pretty confident we're going in the right direction. You know why? Because I have all the data. So I love it. And you're going to see, uh, Jenny, I want you to talk about this too. You know, we've given people kind of a plan for this. And doctors, I'm going to encourage you to do this. And team members, encourage your doctors to have this. And again, the first step is to know what your numbers are. And we've put together this tool. It's called the Money Roadmap Tool that you and Barrett have eloquently created and we're going to roll it out shortly. So if you go to www.actdental.com forward slash money, it's not a live link yet, but it will be. You can download the first one. I'm going to say this. This is not some, you know, you know, BS tool that you download. It's one page. It's a lot of stuff that you're like, okay, this is like Captain Obvious here. No, this is well thought out. It's step by step. It's how to figure your overhead, how to really understand cash flow, a balance statement, a PNL, and a dental practice. We have dumbed it down. I mean, not dumbed it down, but we've simplified it. Can you talk about why this tool, what it is, and why it's so important that a dentist has to use this to start the conversation? I am so excited about this tool. Barrett and I have been working on it for months and months and months. And I don't know how many times I've had someone say, where's the money going? Or I don't know how to set a budget, or I don't know how to communicate this with my team, or I just don't know. So we really started with just these foundational concepts, understanding the basics about the financials in your practice. How do we set budgets? How do we think smart about money? How do we think smart about saving for our future? And this tool is going to take you from just basic mindset, foundational pieces, all the way through setting, understanding your overhead, reading your financial statements, forward thinking that allows you to set budgets and hit goals and save for the life that you want. Amen, sister. So you could check out, you can get your own copy at actdental.com forward slash money, M-O-N-E-Y. Download it. It's free. Nothing better than free. Download it. You're going to see the tool will evolve. We always do this with our tools. As we put these out there, thousands and thousands of dentists download these things. And they're like, hey, one other thing to consider. And we're like, that's genius. We're using the collective intelligence of all of these people. It's kind of like our own built-in AI. And you're going to see the tool will evolve. If you were with us during the pandemic, we published a tool called the Cash Burn Tracker. Now, well, yes, this. yeah, we produced that for you. Yes, we also used it ourselves to calculate how many days these dollars would exist. Now, that was unique for that situation, but you're going to see the money tool is even better than that. 
We're going to help you create a better practice and a better life and know exactly where your money's going so you can keep more of it and you can have a life and you can do the fun things. So Jenny, thanks for being on. Really appreciate this. This is always fun. This is, like, this is such a hot topic. I could do this. This could be a three-hour podcast because there's so many components of it. But I think this is good for the day, don't you think? I think it's I think it's enough for today and excited for what's coming with this. Like you said, let us know when you use the tool. If you have suggestions, we learn from you just like you learn from us. It's one of the best things about the ACT community. Amen, sister. So check it out. There'll be a link down in. If you guys weren't taking notes today, don't worry. We took notes for you. They're down in the show notes. So if you're listening on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, just flip up. You'll see all the notes, everything we talked about, the links in there. You can just click on them. Nothing easier than that. Hey, and until we see you guys next time or you hear from us next time, keep watching or keep listening to the best practice show. You guys enjoy your day. Mm -hmm.